You take the blue pill. You stay in Wonderland. You wake up believing whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. And I'll show you how deep this rabbit hole goes. Have you been blue pill in it? Are you staying ignorant, being fed stuff from Facebook and the mainstream media, been sold narratives that aren't? They don't seem to fit maybe your intuitive relation to reality? Well, there's this stuff has been going on for a long time, folks, even since 1776. And even before then, even before America. So come with me on a journey if you, f if you dare. And you can take whatever you want and leave whatever you don't want. You know, this is just an information hub, a source. And you should do your own research to come with you up with your own conclusions. So I feel like people who, who delve into these subjects are kind of overwhelmed. And there's a lot of crazy information. So I'm going to try my best to, to distill it into an easy digestible format. But I do want to start with an early part of history when we tried to become a nation 1776 and uh, Alexander Hamilton was all about the banks okay so we're gonna go even further back in time let me just tell you to a straight these banks these central banks have a lot of power when you have a lot of power, you try to do whatever you can to sustain that power. You could even attribute to that to an organism. An organism wants to survive. Although some organisms don't destroy everything around them to make them survive. But, hey, each one's designed differently. So, so, so many wars, you could possibly all of them have been funded by these central banks these banks that don't have one country that they exist in they have multiple countries and a lot of times these banks fund both sides of the war with loans loans that are gonna ra rack up through a war really badly and then you have to pay off those loans so it's basically, basically like a safe bet but the more they fuel both sides the more damage is done and the deeper these people are in debt. So this is just the beginning of the mentality these people have. They basically want, they're willing for everybody to destroy themselves so they profit off of them. So one of the biggest owners of these central banks are the Rothschilds. The richest family in the world. Been doing worldwide banking forever. This is like the oldest one guy worth trillions worth more than any country can a total GDP multiple countries maybe all the countries they are not even filthy rich stinking filthy filthy rich and not and on the backs of so much sorrow so much pain so much suffering so not only do they fund both sides of wars they they do whatever they can to to f support policies and governments. There's actually a great Rothschild quote. Um, yeah, exactly. Controlling money. Yeah, this this Rothschild, he, he was around um, a, a very important moment of banking coming to rise. Is this what he said? Is this exactly what he said? Yeah, this is what I was looking for. Let me issue and control a nation's money, and I care not who writes the laws. When you control... See, what a bank does is very... It can, they make it a lot more complex so you don't actually see the f blatant fraud. But when you break it all down, they're loaning money to the government at interest and printing money. Printing the money, loaning that money on interest. So basically, you have to give all that money back plus interest, which is every dollar printed. So basically, there's more debt than there is physical money to pay back to these banks, like our Federal Reserve. It's a private bank, but it, it, it 
all the money it prints, it's loaning to the government and getting interest on that. Is bananas how they've established themselves. Fractional reserve banking. That's the idea that you can loan out more money than you actually have in the bank. And people just take this for granted, like, oh, who cares, you know? But every bank can do that for themselves, and now they do it digitally, where you can digitally, I think you have to have one tenth, 10% 10 of the actual money that you actually loan out. So you're inflating the economy artificially, which, which does all sorts of bad things to people who have savings and who have properties and stuff. So what it comes down to is that these crazy bankers and other people, their affiliates, crash economies through wars and depressions through the central banks and other sources that they if you have so much money you can start blackmailing people hiring people if they can't pay you off first then they'll try to blackmail you with something get something dirt on you or they'll threaten you threaten your loved ones they'll find some way and they've been doing that since civilization has started we have to be aware of them we have to perceive them so we're not fooled by them and right now the US government is entrenched it is stanky and we're seeing that now through all the things that are going on how the Supreme Court won't even see these cases where this obvious voter fraud was so rampant so all out of control the fact that Supreme all these courts aren't they're dismissing the cases on technicalities like in the language they're not even listening to the evidence which there's tons and tons of evidence a sworn affidavit is a very is very strong evidence it's one of the strongest direct evidence you can have in a in a court all these people have seen these terrible things going on in the vote voting arena that even just one instance should you should halt things and audit everything but they're not even auditing any anything and there's just so much so much fraud so one of the most powerful tools of these conglomerates is the media. And basically what you can do with the media is control the narrative. Control what people think about something. And it's easy to underestimate the actual power. Especially when you have every single possible news outlet. And then any journals journal, journalism that isn't part of it. You can crush them in all sorts of ways using blackmail, literally killing them, I mean, jailing them. There have been jur journalists that have been thrown in jail. So this is a great image of, of showing how these are funded. So there's these huge conglomerates, Council, for, Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission, and they are all are funding. A lot of these, some of these news don't even make enough money to sustain themselves, and they need this artificial funding. If you think about something that's being totally funded they're gonna say what that person wants to say and the thing is about the news it's not even news at all it is straight propaganda it is all a spin everything they tell you has the intention to make you feel a certain way every single bit it is that that articulated so imagined so these are all corrupt Washington Post Forbes Sun Fox News doesn't matter if you're Republican, doesn't matter if you're Democrat. Those are just tools, those are just avenues for them to control. A two-party system, why is there only two parties? You can, And then you can just clump everybody into two groups. You can also divide them easier, put them against each other. It is, it has been a slow cook. I mean, throughout history, we've, we've fought against them, against people trying to take us over mainly these big banks um a big source power source right now is the chinese communist party um but that's just just a funnel just a channel just people who who agree with who are acceptable to these these criminals these high criminals so this is great this really does show where they're deeply entrenched. Um, Hollywood. Every movie is... I mean, Hollywood is completely owned by the Communist Chinese Party. But you can think in a bigger scope, 
the more important scope is that it's these globalists, we'll call them globalists, that's a good word for them, that they want to have control everything. And Hollywood is a great way to manipulate your thoughts, your beliefs on things. Um, CIA and FBI are heavily entrenched. All the media and the universities, they have tons of people. And you see people are so programmed to have this view of reality through the academics usually a democratic thing they try to get the kids that are they want change and stuff like that and they they give you this narrative that you get sold it's just so so shameful so i kind of want to just for example i wanted to just look up the news let's just see what is it saying right now and we'll Pick it apart. Civility apart. We found solos in our Basically, you can assume everything the news tells you has has a motive behind it. Every single thing has a motive. Um, sorry. Let's see. Hope looks like our worst year is over. Thanks to science, defeating the virus appears to be in reach. How we heal body the language goes behind will define how history remembers not just the virus, but us. Okay, so coronavirus. What a tool for them to use. More than 200 lawmakers now support removing yep. President Trump from office, either through impeachment, his resignation, or the 25th Amendment. So what? He slimes the news. They sicken me. They're so. It's just all these people without integrity. All these people that are willing to sell out the public for whatever, their dollar or for their fear of their blackmail. A lot of what these... Blackmail is a very powerful tool. They get invited to these parties. And like, ooh, go to these parties. The whole Epstein thing. Epstein had a pedophilia ring. And he'd get people, get these politicians to do awful things. And then he'd... They'd get footage of that stuff. And then they hold it over their heads. They're like, your, your life is ruined if anybody finds out about this. It's all kinds of stuff like that. This is such a desperate attempt to use the insurrection. The 25th Amendment was designed to We're going to use the Insurrection Act on them. So you have to have most of the cabinet, Trump's own cabinet, to vote against him. To say that he he needs to be overthrown or something. So, this is the big topic that this is the greatest show of how the media spins things. So we'll go to Twitter. It's funny Twitter's so involved in just like politic stuff. Um. So we'll go to Trump. I was about to say, I couldn't find his account. So this tweet, did they let him upload it now? No, it's an older one. So, so this tweet, one of these tweets, I saw it before they shut it down, and then it's been retweeted. But he literally was saying, guys, chill out. Don't, don't do anything violent when they were storming the Capitol. And by the way, most of the people, people were peaceful. They were just... So this is one of the great techniques of these um, globalists. They infiltrate peaceful protests with some violence. And thusly, you can say, it's not peaceful protests anymore and you gotta clear out. And then they also make the story, hey, it was a violent thing. Look how awful these people are. So that's exactly what they're doing here. Trump said in his video that they removed, he said to chill out. He was calling for peace, but they removed it. And now they're saying that is is an insight to violence him telling them to chill out it's the most backwards twisted thing it just shows how the news doesn't tell the truth it literally reverses the truth it tells the lies just all these lies so, and they're trying to impeach him on this then him telling them to chill out it's boggling but, but the thing is people don't listen i mean people just blindly listen to what they tell them they're like oh yeah especially if you hate all these people hate Trump because they've sold a narrative to you. 
to all you sleepers out there. A lot of sleepers. I have to delete them off my Twitter. That's what I was going to make this video about, but I feel like we need to preamble this. We need to tell you the basics first, if you haven't been red-pilled yet. So, okay, what do they say right now? See, this is good. You should you should view multiple sources. That's the whole point. It's, it's I'm I don't I don't agree with what NVC has to say, but I but by listening to them, you can understand what they're trying to tell you, what they're trying to convince you of. Every president for the last like 30 years have been complete agents for the globalists. <laughs> Look at Cheney. What a creeper. He is so scary. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll skip this. Go back to live feed. Okay, so they're talking about Insurrection Act. They're trying to get you deadly attacks. They weren't violent. If you watch the footage, the whole footage. See, they're pulling. Patriots are pulling back false flag people. See, that's that's instigator. That guy wasn't a regular Trump. So. Literally every bit of this is programmed to make you feel a certain way, make you sell a narrative. Their narrative that they're trying to sell is Trump is a is a tyrant. He's a total opposite. He's been trying to free us from their tyranny. It's insane. It's bonkers. So he still has some moves. But everybody's kind of depressed. All us red pillars are a little bit discouraged because our march seem to turn against us but this is what i think what's going on with it i think i think trump has been instigating the opposition to show to get them to smoke them all out to show them their true colors and then uh and then he, he has more grounds to to indict them and through a military court so i think there's going to be some sort of like military action which is Almost overdue, I would say. There's so much to talk about on this subject, but maybe that was a good beginning of a red pill. I hope you do your own research, look further into these subjects if they interest you or not. See ya.